Hi, in this video, I'm going to go over an algorithm called Prim's algorithm. And what Prim's algorithm is, uh, at a high level, is it's a greedy algorithm for finding the minimum spanning tree of a graph. If you don't know what that means, that's perfectly fine. It actually is a lot easier to understand than that. It's finding all whatever path has the lowest value in a graph and so it means that uh, right here as you can see on the graph we have values like 3 and 4 and uh, 1, 2, 7 uh, every single one of the edges has a weight associated with it and what we're looking for is the path that connects all of the nodes together that has the lowest number and I'm gonna go through and show you how that works on a step-by-step -step basis and you'll understand how Prim's algorithm works once that happens. So the very first thing to do is to pick a node in the graph and it can be completely arbitrary and so if you're new to uh, graph algorithms and to graphs in general nodes are the circles like that and then the edges are the lines that connect the nodes together. And the nodes are also called vertexes as well. Um, but I'm going to call them nodes for the sake of this discussion because that's how I learned them. So we're going to start at A. So this is going to be our starting point right here. We could have started, though, at F or E. We could have started anywhere we wanted, but we're doing it A just because I think it's a little bit easier to read it this way. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at A and we're going to see what edges it has connected to what nodes. So we can see right here that we have A is connected to B. And the value of A to B, so if we go A to B, that has a weight of 3. Then we have another option, A to C, and A to C has a weight of 4. Because, And then all we have to do is we just compare these two. We see that 3 is less than 4, and so we know 3 is going to be the option, which means A to B is going to be our very first option. And that is essentially as easy as it gets. And uh, the only complicated thing uh, will happen here in a second, but I'll show you how that works. So the very first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to color this so you can see the way it actually works. So we're going to go A to B, and we're going to take up that line and now this edge is taken care of. So we know we're going here. Now that we have that set up, now all we have to do is add in the other options. So if we want to connect to different nodes, we can see that B has a few different options. We can go B to E, we can go B to D, we can go B to C, and because of the way the Prim's algorithm works, we can actually still go A to C. So that one's still available to us. So if you want to think of the algorithm in a certain real world kind of sense, it's almost like a snowball. As you add new edges and new nodes, every step of the way, you add in all of their possible connections. So we started off with just, when we had just A in our set, we only had two options, but now that we have A and B in our set, now we have A to B, or I'm sorry, we have A to C, which we still have that one, then we have uh, three other options, and so now we have a total of four different items that uh, we're going to be comparing. So let's do that. So we'll just take a nice easy approach and just go from top to bottom with it. So B to E is 5, B to D is 2, B to C is 1, and A to C is 4. So we can see it's pretty easy. B to C is, and let me switch colors, B to C is going to be our best option. So we now have those points connected. Now another important thing to know about Prim's algorithm is 
once uh, once an edge is connected or once a node has been reached, I should say, then we don't have to worry about connecting it again. So in other words, this A to C is no longer necessary. So this 4, we can cross off because A is now in our set, B is in our set, and C is in our set. So there's no reason to go from A to C anymore. So we don't have to worry about that, which makes it nice, and that gets to be one item that gets crossed off our list. So now that we have these, now we can see we still have B to E, which is 5, B to D, which is 2, then we have C to D, which is 7, and C to F, which is 8. It's pretty easy to see. We have B to D is our best option. And the way prims works, it's very easy. You just keep on recursively going down, adding different nodes, and then adding in all of the items that they point to. So uh, we need to get to E and F now. And to do that, we just compare all of the items, whether it's from B, D, or C. So we can see we have a 5, a 9, a 3, and an 8, obviously. A3 is our best option right there, and so now we have F covered. And the last item is to connect E. We have 5, 9, and 6. 5 is our best pick. And there we go. So if uh, I know the graph's a little bit messy, so I'm going to actually write out uh, what our best options are. So we have... A to B, then we have B to C, then we have B to D, then we have B to E, and lastly we have D to F. Oops, sorry. And there you go. If you take each one of these items, each one of these connections where these nodes are connected, you will have your minimum spanning tree for this graph and you use Prim's algorithm in order to get it. So good job and let me know if you have any questions at all about that video.